Hi everyone, I'm the Thinker Teacher and I'm here to teach you coding. Beginning with the absolute basics of how coding works, I'm going to teach you how to use programming to draw shapes, to fill those shapes with colors, how to use recursive equations to create motion. I'll teach you how to take keyboard or mouse input and by the time you're done with this series, you'll be able to code your own basic version of MS Paint from scratch. The language I will teach you is called Processing, a language developed at MIT with the purpose of making coding more visual and accessible, but still maintaining real complexity. By the time you finish this series, you'll not only be able to make your own programs, but you'll be better equipped to learn other languages like Python, C++, and even the Arduino. And furthermore, if you finish this series, you'll be able to take on my next series, which is coding your own basic video games from scratch. So, if you're ready, let's do this. Let's go. All right, first step in our process, let's download processing. So we're gonna go to processing.org. And by the way, you could skip ahead. I'm gonna have timestamps throughout the video for whatever section you wanna to skip to. But I'm just going to download this right now, processing.org. And there we are, and we're of course going to click download. And this might be a little bit different. It's not a typical executable. So I'm going to click download, and I've already done it. And then I'm going to click open file or show in folder. Now you don't just want to double click this. You want to extract it, because this is a zipped file. So I'm going to click extract all on the second version I did, or the first version. Now. You want to click a place that, a better location, like this wants to automatically put it in my downloads folder. I don't recommend that. So I've created my own place. Uh, let's put this in my D drive in a place I've called programs. And I'm going to put it in here in a folder I already made called processing and select folder. And then you're going to extract. And this one takes a little bit. And the other thing to bear in mind after you do this is this is not going to automatically create a shortcut when you're done. So you're going to need to create a shortcut to the executable once this is done. So yay, we're at 74%. I'll just, let's just do this. Okay, so now there it is, right? You can see my folder. Boom, it's installed. And now I'm going to right click this thing. I'm going to pin it to my start menu which you cannot see. And I'm also going to, we're also going to pin to my taskbar. Ah, there you are. So I've pinned it to my start menu and I've pinned it to my taskbar. So now I can easily execute it um, comfortably from my desktop. Oh, and it's gonna do this too, Windows protected your PC because it doesn't recognize it. Uh, don't click, don't run. Obviously click more info and then run anyway. And yay, it works. And so it's gonna give you this fun intro thing. You should take a look at those two. Those are pretty cool. And now we're ready to start coding. All right, everybody, let's start coding. So disclaimer, this is gonna start off super basic. Um, I just wanna make sure everybody gets everything. So I'm gonna go over like vocab and uh, particulars of syntax, but it's gonna get more complicated as we go. So bear with me if you're already into this a little bit. So first thing, file save as. I'm going to call this one a line dot because that's what we're going to do. All right, some vocabulary. So we are going to code our first function. What is a function? A function is a line of code that, believe it or not, performs a particular function. Um, it's an unfortunate word, and they use in coding, they use function to mean many things across many languages. I think they would benefit from increasing the vocabulary a little bit, but whatever, it is what it is. So here's our first function, size. Now some particulars. This has to be typed exactly as I typed it. If I make it a capital S, notice it no longer changes color. And if you look down here, notice that it says size int int does not exist. So it's looking for a pre-built function and that's size. So pre-built functions in many different types of programming, um, they will change colors to indicate you type them correctly. Now within our function, you type in values called arguments or parameters, but typically we'll call them arguments. Parameters mean something a little bit different. So it's expecting two values here. Let's run this and I'll show you what I mean. 
So the two values it's expecting dictate the size of your canvas. So our canvas is 400 pixels wide and 300 pixels tall. Notice that these two values have to be separated by a comma. If you don't do that, it's going to give you another error code at the bottom because it's not seeing two separate values. Notice it's contained within a set of parentheses and it ends in a semicolon. Get used to that. You are probably going to mess that up a lot. That's normal. Everyone has issues with syntax at first. Completely normal. All right. Now, one key thing about this, I said it a moment ago, but I want to repeat this. Processing draws your canvas from top down. So the zeroth pixel is up here and the 300th pixel is down here. That's different than how you've been taught in algebra. Okay, let's do our second function. We're gonna draw a line. So the line function is expecting four arguments. The initial x position, the initial y position, the final x position, and the final y position. So let's give it those values. Let's start it off at 100 comma 100 and let's end it at 200 comma 200. And then the semicolon, there you go. So now we've drawn a line and lo and behold, it begins at 100 pixels to the right, 100 pixels down and ends at 200 pixels to the right and 200 pixels down. Yay. So again, cool thing about this in processing, you're learning coding, you're learning the basics of functions and arguments and syntax, but you're learning them by producing something visual right away. It's one of the reasons I love this language so much. All right, it's time for you to see what an individual pixel looks like. So you're gonna type point and then let's put it right at the end of this line. So I'm gonna put it at 202, it's X position, and 202, it's Y position. And I'm gonna to have to zoom in to show you, but that's an individual pixel. That's what one pixel looks like on your screen, which is gnarly, right? And you are looking at literally millions of pixels, refreshing 60, 120, or if you're even super sweaty, maybe 360 times a second which is crazy, right? Millions of pixels changing colors, 16.7 million colors, 120 times a second. That's crazy math. I'll do a separate video on that. It's pretty nuts, the processing power just in your screen. Okay, so that's the basics of this. Um, let's get to your first assignment because I want to dive you right into it. So here we go. I want you to make this a line face. I want the face to be centered horizontally. The face should consist of two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. Again, centered horizontally. I'm not too particular. You don't have to match up my spacing perfectly, but try to match it up as best as you can. And that's it. So this is going to be a theme for this whole tutorial series. I'm always going to end with an assignment. Um, this is the best way for you to learn coding. Uh, tutorials are useful for sure, but you're not going to really absorb this information until you start coding your own things. It's absolutely integral to your learning process. I can't stress this enough. I've been teaching different subjects for 20 years. I've written my own physics book. I lectured to medical students when I was a medical student on the best ways to study. Um, I can't emphasize this enough. You have to make your learning as active as possible in order for it to stick. So pause the video. Think about how you're going to do this, and then I'll go over the answer shortly. Did you pause the video? You better. See you in a minute. All right, time for the answer. So first thing, file save, because processing doesn't automatically save your files. Something to get used to. So I did file save, and now let's go file save as, and I'm going to call this 1B Hello World because that's a classic term you use in programming. Your first program is often called Hello World. This is a cooler version of it though. All right, so let's go on. Um, let's look at our reference project. We're trying to make this face. So I'm gonna start with the centered nose and it's the same size canvas as what we've already been using, 400 by 300, so I'm not gonna change that. So let's do this nose in the center. Now it's a vertically it's a vertical line, right? Which means it's initial X position and it's final X position are the same, right? But the initial Y position, let's start it off in the middle at 150 and uh, let's end it at 200. Let's see what that looks like. And there you go, I've got a centered nose. Uh, looks okay. 
Looks a little long though, right? So let's cut that down by 25 pixels. Let's try that. And that's looking pretty good. There you go. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. I do want a vertical line though. All right, so then, now let's draw our horizontal lines. By the way, notice that I don't code the entire thing. I'm just doing one, one line at a time, literally, um, until um, I get the entire thing, right? Don't, I recommend getting just a little bit of your program working and this will make more sense as we keep going. All right, so next thing, line, let's draw the eyes. Now I want them centered again and uh, I want a space between the middle. So I'm gonna start it off at like 150 pixels I'm going to put it above the nose, so I'm going to put it at 100. So the starting and ending Y position need to be at 100 because it's a horizontal line. Let's draw it to like 175. Spacing for the heck of it. That looks pretty good, right? Okay, so now let's draw the other eyeball line, and I'm going to start it at, we'll say, 225, 100, and I'm going to end it at 250 and still at a height of 100, and there we go. There's our other eye. By the way, this spacing here doesn't matter. You can do this however you like, that's irrelevant. I guess I'll group things together. Okay, now finally the mouth. Uh, let's go with line. Mm, let's begin it at like 125 pixels. Let's put it below the nose, and the nose ends at 175. Start it at like 225, let's try that. And uh, let's go to, I gotta make it longer than the eyeballs. And let's say like 275 and then 225. Let's see what that looks like. Boom. Uh, pretty good, did I get it? Pretty close. It looks like my original eyeballs were a little further apart. Mouth's about the same, but I'm not too uh, particular about it. The purpose of this assignment was to get you used to just basic coding, but a big theme that's gonna occur in processing is spatial orientation, right? You are, you need to understand where each individual pixel is and how you can manipulate those pixels. And this is absolutely crucial to being prepared for harder things like game design. So that's about it. Um, if you want, I actually have a book I've written on the subject. It's a short pamphlet. Uh, I'll be selling it on my website, perhaps on Amazon yet. I'm not sure. I'm still finishing it. It should be out by the time this video is done. And it's $2.99. If you're curious, you can buy it. Uh, it's basically going to cover the same stuff I did in this video, except you just have it a nice format for yourself. And that's it. Let's keep going. Let's keep going until you get this full thing. I want you to be able to code MS Paint by the time you're done. All right. Bye-bye.